When my son was almost through high school, he was at the end of his senior year, he had a shirt on that was a nurse dressed in a bikini with spike heels and a big injection. And, and she was saying, come on, baby. And so I said, Lenny, you're not wearing that shirt out of this house. Get in your room and change that. It's disrespectful to nurses. It's disrespectful to women. And I'm a nurse, so of course I didn't want him to wear that. So he said, oh, Miss First Amendment. <laughs> So that I, I could see that this all comes back to you. You know, you've got to, if you've got to stand up for your rights, you've got to, you know your kids are going to, too. Well, what do you tell your children? I mean, you're, you're, your kids come up and they mm -hmm. say, gee, uh, my uncle, you, my mom, are all part of a Supreme Court case. What do you tell them? Yeah, I told my son and the kids in our family know about how kids should have rights, too, and kids care about peace. And our, our message was about peace, and it was to make a better world, and that's what kids care about. And so it's a human drive to want to express yourself. Kids have it too, and that they should be able to express themselves. Of course, you have to do that in a way that is, um, you know, following the, the laws of our land, the Constitution, the, and also respecting the rights of others. So I teach kids in the schools and also my own kids to stand up for your rights, speak up for the things you care about, but do it with respect for the rights of others as well. Is there a tipping point where you sat down with your brother and made, in conjunction with your parents and said, aha, we're going to do this? Uh, no, I don't think there's any ex exact moment. What happened was my brother John and my mother and their, uh, my brother's friend Chris Eckhart and his mom had gone to a peace rally in Washington DC that year and so when he came back they were coming back they you know were trying to think of something they could do to stand up for peace it was 1965 Christmas and Robert Kennedy was proposing a Christmas truce in the war so the kids and the adults that were driving together too they thought it would be good for you know them to do something about it in Des Moines and I mean we were part of a peace movement by then my parents were involved with the Quakers because my dad had been put out of um, two Methodist churches for his stand on the civil rights issue for racial equality. He had become unpopular at two churches and so by then he was involved with the Quakers, 1965. What was the reaction in the school? I mean, uh, I, I, we've had a chance to speak with the uh, Barnett sisters, uh, Lillian uh, Gopitis, I mean, and reaction within the school. What was the kids, what were the kids' reaction? The kids were just mostly afraid that we would get in trouble and, you know, my friend Connie, you know, she said, you're going to get in trouble, you better not do that. And then some kids at lunch teased me. Some At the boys' table, they sat behind us at the girls' table. And so the kids at the boys' table said, I, I want an armband for Christmas. I want an armband. But, you know, I always ignored them anyway, so I just ignored them. But I was lucky. I didn't get too much, you know, bad reaction from kids. But Chris Eckhart over at, the high, at Roosevelt High School, he got hassled quite a bit. And... Some of the other boys that weren't um, in the case, Bruce Clark, Ross Peterson, they got hassled up at the mall, you know, but my brother John was getting hassled by some kids, but a football player came and intervened and said, now wait a second, guys, you know, John has his rights to speak up for what he believes in, too. Then you enter the wild world of the court system, and you work your way yeah. through, was it, was it a district court case that worked its way up? It was a district case where we lost and then we had a wonderful lawyer Dan Johnston from the ACLU and then it went to the appeals court in St. Louis where it was um, you know we basically lost again and then it was appealed to the Supreme Court so in 1969 is when it finally um, won the ruling was written by Abe Fortas in 1969 and the words are he was so eloquent in his ruling that neither students or teachers leave their rights at the schoolhouse gate and that students are persons under our constitution with rights and responsibilities and it really had to do with how education should be that it's it's an interactive process i know we were so excited when we got the word that we had won the case and i found a letter recently from my mother written to my father who was out of town he was at the paris peace talks actually and uh, my mother said, honey, you know, we won the case. We're so excited. We celebrated with ice cream and soda pop. And it was really great. Yeah, the, your, the student, that's a few years now. Were you in high school at the time? 
Yeah, I was in 11th grade in St. Louis. Did there, was there any uh, reaction? Was there sort of a way to go? Maybe Amazingly that? enough, there wasn't that much reaction from the teachers and the students were, you know, yeah, they were happy, but I wasn't a, there wasn't a huge reaction. Like, uh, you would have expected, um, I guess, you would have, ex I mean, I would have expect now that I'm older, I would think maybe the teachers would have, you know, used it for a, an interesting um, lesson in class or something like that, but um, it was really crazy because Time Magazine and Newsweek started coming and I was so shy. But it's really been a good experience and I like to pass it on to students and let them know that, you know, you don't have to be Martin Luther King, you can just be you, just be, you know, an average person, a child even, can take a stand and that when you do, life becomes very interesting and meaningful and, and it's even fun. An armband, yeah. which was sort of a piece Vietnam War time period. Mm -hmm. uh, what did the, how did the vets react? Um, the vets, you know, some people were mad about it, but they weren't necessarily vets. Some people misunderstood and thought that we were being unpatriotic, and they threw, you know, sent some hate mail and things like that to our house. I think some people do sometimes misunderstand about patriotism. We thought we were being patriotic towards, you know, and things like that. But people misunderstood. I'm, I'm sorry they did. We weren't saying, you know. We weren't putting down people. In our mind, we were just speaking up for peace. And I admire the work of the Jackson Center. It's just wonderful the way that you're, you know, continuing the message of, of um, human rights that um, Justice Jackson was about. And I love his decision in Barnett and, and so many others and the stands that he took also for human rights. Thank you. We look forward to getting you to the Jackson Center. Thank you for your work. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.